Well, good evening and welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. There are two rules here at the College of Complexes. The first one, the first one is one fool at a time. And the second one is no personal attacks. The College of Complexes consists of the following format. First, we'll have a brief announcements period. Second, our speaker will then speak. Third, our, we'll have a question and answer period. And at the end of that question and answer period, we'll have our infamous rebuttal period. At this time... It's a Supreme Court. The Supreme Court. Okay. Ellen Corley, about the Supreme Court. Ellen, are you ready? Yeah. Let's give a warm, rousing round of applause to Ellen Corley. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just we, letting her get through here. We've got a camera rolling, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah, if you guys okay. could refrain from getting in front of it all the time, mm -hmm. yeah. it would be much appreciated. Yeah. How about another round of applause for Ellen? Yeah. Okay. Good luck. Okay. Well, yeah, hi. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, the, um, I have to say that... Uh, the plan that I had to talk about the hidden history of the Supreme Court and the betrayal of America uh, kind of got put on the side because oh I've been working on a case as a, um, as some of you know, I'm an, a, basically a investigator, you know. Um, my background is market research, intelligence analysis, uh, usually for corporations. And I uh, have come upon a, a, a client and an investigation that is uh, compelling me. So what I'm going to do is uh, read you kind of my first draft of uh, asking for Congress to listen uh, to give me um, the power to investigate this further because it, it's incriminating evidence. How many of you have ever heard of Promise, the Promise, Inslaw Promise software? That's basically what uh, I've been, I've, people have been writing about it, this woman Whitney Webb, and it, what's come out is that it, there was a story that was, uh, a, this software was stolen, um, it was developed for the Justice Department Prosecutor Management Information System, was passed to um, from the Justice Department to an Israeli spy, Rafi Eitan, was a notorious Assad spy, and he, he took it and enhanced it, uh, put a Trojan horse in it, enabling it to be um, like a hacking system that was put into our our uh, Los Alamos, put in police departments all across the country so that the Mossad could basically spy on us, hide, hack into us. And um, now it has been, uh, they've been writing about, the guy that was writing about it, a guy named Danny Casolaro, uh, was murdered, found murdered, you know, to keep it covered up. And um, basically I, I started researching a very good book that was suppressed by Gordon Thomas on um, Robert Maxwell. Uh, how many people know who Mark, Mark P is, right? Okay, um, he was a Mossad agent, it turns out, who was selling it. His job was to sell it. He sold it to the Ukrainian, leading Ukrainian mobster who turned up in the Mueller investigation. Um, who sold it to the KGB? Who sold it to? Uh, it's, sold it to Osama bin Laden, and uh, the Chinese and the Saudi Arabians. So this hacking system explains, you know, how the Russians hacked our elections, how they steal our democratic uh, roll, voter rolls. Basically, um, you know, this. I'm like, why? question I've been asking ever since I've been kind of researching 9-11 is, um, you know, there's been a lot of research that's come out and uh, why hasn't um, 
if they know who did it, why hasn't it kind of gotten to the court system? And uh, I, what I'm realizing through this promise system, and actually the guy who developed it, William Hamilton, who is the one who, all, all of this came out because he was prosecuting, saying, you stole my software. And they were like, you know, trying to just shut him up. But um, he wrote me and said if I could provide him the criminating information, um, so we're going to work together on this. So that's what uh, got me going. Um, okay, so here is the, basically, um, Dick Simpson of UIC, I've been writing about, he wrote me and said, you know, you've got to get this information to Congress, and the way you do that is you have to get an invitation from, you know, somebody. And so start with your, um, your, uh, your representatives and um, so I called Danny Davis's office this girl suggested that he might be the most see people don't want to touch this because it you know kind of incriminates everybody basically but mostly the Republicans and powerful people who will uh, you know put powerful people on them and I think really it you know what it incriminates is the Mossad and um, they have a lot of influence. They give a lot of money to a lot of people on both sides of the aisle. And um, so nobody wants to expose this, which is why I think it needs exposing. And um, so here's, here's what I, I wrote. And, um, and I think it gets to, uh, you know, it kind of gets at the um, problem. So um, the primary issue, the global issue I'd like to present is uh, summarized below regarding how the surveillance state has taken over our government through Attorney General William Barr and other Republican Party legal counsels of the earlier Justice Departments of Ford, Reagan, Bush, and others through their treasonous aiding of enemy agents by allowing enemy agents to steal the Inslaw Promise Prosecutor's Management Information System from William Hamilton and the politically captured Justice Department's subsequent suppression of this case through corrupt political legal counsels abusing their power in the Justice Department to suppress investigations and prosecutions for their self-interest. This, this started in the 70s, it went through the 80s and 90s, so that's, you know, um, there's a lot of people that could come down <laughs> this that get actually prosecuted. The issue is critical at the individual micro level, the institutional meso level, and the macro law and policy level. What I need to present is a case that I believe could get past the lack of standing issue that our current Federalist Society jurists are using to keep the issue of corporations violating individuals' rights issues from getting to the Supreme Court because I am proposing that my alliance with other corporate persons gives me standing to represent the many intelligence analysts and publishers who are being suppressed as corporate persons by the political monopoly that has structurally captured our government, structurally captured our government at every level through their capture of our banking system, our intelligence agencies, our legal system, our political parties, etc. Specifically, I propose that this class action suit, uh, including Christopher Bolin, uh, who wrote Solving 9-11, he was tasered by Homeland Security in, uh, in Chicago, and, um, and then when he tried to report it, they were going to put him in jail for, uh, for assaulting them. This is the pattern and practice of our Homeland Security in the you know, New World Order police state of of America ever since 9-11. Okay, so the, um, so Christopher Bolin, who I also am talking to from Sweden, he, he comes every place but Chicago, and actually asked me, you know, can I help him with this case? And I'm like, you know, this is my best, one of my best ideas for, um, you know, what you can do when you're, a, you know, a corrupt Justice Department system is trying to politically prosecute you um, to shut you up for pointing out their criminality. 
Okay, so Christopher <coughs> Bolin and all of the other suppressed investigative journalists and publishers whose intelligence products and services are being censored in a classic Mossad Black Cube style capture and kill campaign through the hacking systems that have been built off the promise system, starting with the Facebook Cambridge Analytica SCL election system that was used to create the Trump, Cruz, and Brexit campaigns, and, and you know, that um, which the corrupt Justice Department under William Barr then hid from and covered up in a Mueller report on the investigation into Russian hacking of our election. Mueller and Comey's experience of being highly controlled and censored in terms of not being able to conduct a, a honest, open investigations yeah. into who interfered with our election is exactly the problem all investigators have been hampered by under current policies of the Justice Department. The pattern and practice of honest investigative journalism yeah, being you. censored is becoming more and more of an open secret among researchers and investigators of all kinds, from students to the most widely respected investigators in the field. Bolin's experience of being targeted in order to silence him is representative of all the many investigative journalists and publishers, including myself and William Hamilton, who are trying to get the truth to the people about the fact that the enemy is us. And those of us who have the most damning evidence proving that the neoconservatives in the Republican Party, like Cheney, Rumsfeld, orchestrated and covered up 9-11 in order to give the office of the presidency what they call unitary executive power needed based on the idea that they are that we are undergoing a terrorist attack and therefore need to install a security state with ongoing surveillance systems capturing all our phone calls emails from the red lights in order to prevent attacks what those of us who are investigating this have found is that this strategy of using a Pearl Harbor type of attack by an enemy as a reason for declaring war is a strategy that was used by Hitler and his legal advisors, Carl Schmitt and Reinhard Gillen, to rationalize attacking Russia when their parliament was burned down by a patsy who, who couldn't have done it by himself. And it's also the strategy that a neoconservative group called the Project for New American Century decided to implement in order to rationalize our declaring a war on terror and thereby implement the Patriot, which gives the president unitary executive power, which they say can't, makes him, they say, can't be prosecuted by the Justice Department. So they say, you know, don't, you can't put Trump on the witness stand here, right? So it's an old Justice Department policy going back to Nixon. They fail to say that, and it doesn't come through in the mail, in the media. This is how we have become essentially a military dictatorship, pursuing an empire rather than a democracy as our founding, honest founding fathers, Washington, Jefferson, Franklin, wanted us to be. Specifically, Washington, in his farewell address, cautioned us to be wary of foreign entanglements and political parties that lead to factionalism. As a researcher whose professional experience and training has taught me how to find out the truth about a situation using investigative journalist methods of digging past the obfuscation to get to the truth of who really committed a crime, what I've learned from reading the best analyses I could on or who orchestrated 9-11 and how they did it and how they are getting away with it, I have come to learn from reading the best investigators out there that is that we know who did it from Christopher Bolin, who spelled it out in 9-11, and on his website, www.bolin.com, and we can tell how they did it. But the piece of the puzzle that seemed to be missing is how they are managing to keep it covered up. This is why I'm so excited to have recently started focusing on this enhanced promise software system, which is a story that has recently been written about in depth by investigative journalist Whitney Webb, Basically, Webb has written articles in Mint Press News that connected the dots in a story about how the software was stolen by the famous Mossad super agent who famously captured Eichmann, Rafi Etan, who enhanced the promised software with a trapdoor Trojan horse. 
enable the Mossad to spy on and hack into the intelligence agencies and prosecutors' offices and police departments wherever it was installed, and it gave them the ability to revise history and cover up evidence and make it appear that Russians or Iranians or Al-Qaeda or Osama bin Laden were the threat to us. Basically, what I've come to understand is that the promised software is the perfect tool for a psychopath agency like the Mossad and those of us who work with them to be able to use because it enabled them to orchestrate false flag cybersecurity attacks and blame it on those like Russia, Iran, that they want to rationalize the UK, US, NATO allies wage another war on. Basically, all the research I've done, mostly by searching the internet for articles on the Insult Promise software, has led me to see how the software has been modified by the Israeli war state, which it turns out was formed to be a covert operation of the Nazi state from the time that a deal was made between Hitler and Albana to allow the Jews to occupy it. We also know from research, much of which has been highly suppressed, and therefore you don't know it, that the goal of the Israeli state-sponsored terrorist groups, the Ergun and the Stern Group, which are now powerful terrorist genocidal and the powerful terrorist genocidal cover-up like Hood Party that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is using to wage World War IV for the Fourth Reich, in the same way that Donald Trump is using the Republican Party and Rahm Emanuel and Chuck Schumer are using the Democratic Party to wage forever war. Basically, what's so important about the Promise software system piece of the puzzle is that it provides us with the evidence the investigators need to prove who orchestrated 9-11, how they orchestrated 9-11, who did not orchestrate 9-11. Did Osama bin Laden really orchestrate it, or had he been given the software by Ukrainian mobsters who sold it to the Russians, who sold it to Osama bin Laden, as is the story that is now coming out. It is important that we get this information to Congress and criminal courts of law because this is the only way we can expose, investigate, prosecute, and stop the billionaires who are using the promise hacking technology to achieve their criminal ends and take over our country through getting elected and by rigging our elections and, and smearing the, op the opposition uh, to them. Specifically, knowing as we do now that the U.S. and Israel and other state governments have been behind these big hacks, we now have the smoking gun we need to have to be able to prove our hypothesis that all the cyber technology crimes that are being blamed on Russia, Iran, or Osama bin Laden, ISIS, are actually being manufactured by a joint, covert CIA, NSA, Mossad operation, and then made to look like the other country did it. In other words, what I'm proposing now is that I be given the power of an independent council which is what we had after Watergate, because it gave the independent counsels like Lawrence Walsh, who investigated and prosecuted Iran-Contra, the ability to do an internal investigation and subpoena incriminating records that people like Oliver North and Elliot Abrams did not want to give them. It is interesting that Bill Clinton was tricked into signing a bill to take away the power of the independent counsel after Ken Starr, essentially abused his power as the independent counsel by using it to focus his investigation on the Monica Lewinsky scandal and Hillary Clinton's Blackwater investigation, which most would agree was an impeachment manufactured by the Republicans as a smear based on what we now know from reading the documents that have been released through FOIA requests on the promise, which is weirdly filed under FOIA on Kavanaugh and Inslaw. What, well, I'm not sure yet what role the Kavanaugh played, but that's how it's labeled in the FOIA request. What you do see is in these files is that Ken Starr was, was contacted by, by um, Elliot Richardson, who was the honest investigative general that did not, did not want to fire everybody for Nixon in order to cover up Watergate. Um, so he when uh, Bork took over and took and started corrupting everything, Elliot Richardson started working with William Hamilton to make this case. For 10 years, he was investigating and prosecuting this. He sends this letter to, to um, Ken Starr, you know, our 
who's still out there doing damage in the Trump impeachment, he sends his letter to him and Ken Starr basically suppresses the whole investigation and then they, they close it out and say, we've decided that there's no case here, that this was in the wrong court, even though it had gone through the right courts. Um, it's a long process. But what's also interesting that I, you can't help but notice in looking at it now is that one of the versions of this prosecutor, this promise system, what's happened to it now is that it, it was then given, put in a form called systematics, which Hillary Clinton actually was using to, um, in, to bring cocaine with the FBI in and out of Mena, Arkansas. So you see that it, this isn't just the Democrats and the Republicans who have abused the power of the CIA and the FBI and this software to cover up their, their profiting and crimes. You know, they, this has been an operation that they both parties used and collaborated with together, right? Um, and that managed never to get past Ken Starr's, you know, multi-million dollar investigation. What he was able to do is suppress the real crimes uh, by the political operatives and, you know, make up an impeachment on a non-issue, which is kind of what we've seen happen it's a lot, exactly what we saw happen with the latest impeachment. You know, um, it's not like the only crime Trump was guilty of was, was what, see, um, suppressing the, uh, you know, holding off on the sending bombs to Ukraine so that they could bomb other Ukrainians um, through Russia, for Russia. They, th this is, this is the corruption of the whole department. It's structural. This is what I'm trying to, the reason why, uh, really what I'm trying to say is that, you know, a lot of you have heard me, you know, talk about the deep state, blah, 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 for years and say, oh, she's a conspiracy theorist. And it, it has gotten really old because, I mean, what I'm trying to say and what Christopher Boleyn is saying and what um, William Hamilton's saying, we, you know, is that this is a structural corruption at the, you know, at the heart of government. And they've actually rewritten the laws that they don't investigate themselves. They say, you know, and that's, we, we have to sit and listen to the news every day and go, you know, what, why can't they investigate themselves? Mueller couldn't do it, right? So anyhow, um, I heard you, Lana. I heard the, um, okay, we know from these FOIA documents, okay, that, uh, that Ken Starr, yeah, suppressed this, at this investigation. Okay, what's um, particularly incriminating because it shines a light on the pattern and practice of Ken Starr and William Barr and Kavanaugh and all of those who covered up the promise investigation by using their power as legal counsels, attorney judges, investigators, intelligence mm -hmm. analysts to cover up evidence of their own party's crimes, their own personal crime, by illegally using the CIA and FBI and local police surveillance power to spy on manufacture spear campaigns and and then cover it all up in the historical record. This is actually called revisionist Zionism and um, revisionist history and it always sounded so un you know like you know uninteresting but it is a really serious crime that uh, we need to make a law for. Um, what we can do now when we get the power to honestly investigate who ordered the COINTELPRO spying on Martin Luther King and John F. Kennedy and so many other leaders of the Democratic, Liberal, Socialist, Communist parties so that we can make the case that needs to be made against political operatives who orchestrated and cover up these political hit jobs that were carried out by the CIA operatives and covered up by the Justice Department and prosecutors and their corrupt political operatives across the countries and other countries. So what's so powerful about this opportunity is if we can reform the ability of our government to investigate itself, we can then get about the business of restoring our country's ability to be a force for good rather than evil in the world. 
The truth is that for 60 years, as long as I can remember, since the Nixon-Kennedy election was the first election I can remember, we've always given our government the benefit of the doubt that they were honest and playing by the rules, since that's what we were all taught to do. As it turns out, however, more and more of us have gradually been waking up to the fact that the game is being rigged by the Republicans and, the, and some of the Democrats and the lobbyists for the Israeli-American neoconservatives, but we have not been able to wake up everyone else about the problem because the honest investigations into corruption are not being carried out. And if they are, they are being suppressed in court and in the media, and therefore the problem and the solutions are never talked about in the court of opinion. My goal in writing this now is to get an invitation to present this problem before Congress so they will give me the power of an independent counsel so that I can fully investigate all of the power elites who were parties to and have gained power or influence from the use of illegal surveillance technologies and influence campaigns. The key difference between what I'm proposing and what the Justice Department in recent years has been doing is they are blatantly using it to suffer justice and promote injustice. Specifically, they have been firing all the lawyers and overturning all the policies and not taking cases that were put into the Justice Department and other regulatory agencies to protect our rights like voting rights and guarantee equal opportunity rights to equal access without discrimination. They essentially have been giving themselves the right to take away our rights and have been spending our money propagandizing the idea that this libertarian idea of liberty and free speech and free markets is what will lead to true liberty and freedom and justice for all. The truth is that among themselves there's a great deal of evidence that they have been planning this fascist coup for many years, going back to at least the fascist coup that America First and the Liberty Lobby tried to get Smedley Butler to lead for them in order to bring down FDR and his liberal New Deal. The opportunity I'm proposing is that we prosecute them in criminal court using the same, using the honest, using laws like honest services fraud laws and the Citizen Protection Act laws that were designed by Congress to enable prosecutors to make cases against corrupt prosecutors. We also need to restore all the regulatory power of the FEC and the FTC and the FCC and the regulatory power of the Gillette Amendment to the Interstate Commerce Commission so that they will so that the illegal forever campaigns cannot be run out of the president's office using Fox News, Citizens United, Facebook, Cambridge Analytica, SCL elections to run fake news campaigns and smear campaigns using PR firms like Manafort and Stone and the campaigns that were run out of the Internet Research Agency using Fox News talking points which is evidence that I found but which on Wikipedia which was covered up. Ultimately my plan is to get this into the Supreme Court as a class action lawsuit led by corporate persons uh, which I am as a political intelligence consultant and William Hamilton is, is a developer of intelligence software system that was stolen by the Mossad agent Rob Vieta. So, um, Beyond this is kind of an earlier draft, but I want to, this is, just to clarify um, something that I didn't get to, and it probably is buried in there somewhere, is that um, this software has been developed into Palantir. Has anybody ever heard of Palantir? This is, uh, or Peter Thiel. He's a billionaire, you know, one of Trump's biggest sponsors who, um, you know, has been seen with him at, he was actually seen with William Barr at the Federalist Society speech where Barr was uh, bragging about, um, you know, how smart they were and how stupid uh, the liberals are um, for, uh, for speak, trying to claim that there's anything corrupt about William Barr. But Palantir is the software used by the ICE system. Okay, it's also the system used by the police department. It's the leading and the fusion centers. Okay, it's called Gotham and Metropolis. If you look it up on the TV, you see Charlie Beck, the, the new Chicago Police Department chief of police, as the poster boy showing what great uh, police they do with using Palantir. But they don't, the problem that they don't tell us is that 
ever since Rudy Giuliani and, um, started using these systems in New York, and they were being used across our country in 60 police agencies in the 70s and 80s, they moved from their model of investigating a crime that actually happens to investigating a crime before it happens. This, that is true. I'd like to hear, if you're a police officer and have a different opinion about this, I'd like to hear it. But this is the research that I found. My stepfather was, you know, sucked into the Rudy Giuliani campaign at, through the Manhattan Institute. And, um, and so I heard all about, you know, what wonderful things Comstat and, uh, and now we see Palantir did and does. But, and if you see, you also see these documentaries, The Great Hack, where you see how the, um, this is the system that was used to push the Brexit campaign. You know, they, this is how they get in and impersonate others on the internet and, um, you know, try to rally, you know, black people into not voting because, and, and they put up mean things about Hillary on all the, to the liberals. They, these are influence campaigns that are all done by hacking technology. These are psychological operations. We know, I have a document here, um, let me show you this, uh, that, that has also come out on a FOIA request, you know, um, called COINTELPRO, showing, you know, documenting and showing all that's been exposed and then covered up called the counterintelligence, um, it's called counterintelligence program that was used, we know, by J. Edgar Hoover to spy on Martin Luther King and, and others and, um, you know, put, you know, take pictures of him, have him sex with somebody and then showing it to his wife, try to get him to commit suicide, all sorts of intimidation tactics. This is what, you, if you ever saw any of the, um, the uh, Edward Snowden movie, Snowden, and the documentary, Citizen Four. This is what uh, he, he showed, and showed in the Oliver Stone movie, Snowden, that, that what led Edward Snowden to leave um, the NSA was seeing how these programs are being used um, through PRISM, is another, the next level of PRISM, X key score of Palantir, where they, use it, it's a weapon of war. They, that to, they showed how they could just shut out all the lights in China with the push of a button. You know, they're so proud of their ability to wage, you know, this is like something out of a Batman comic book or something, you know, that there's this idea of using, they call it the, the um, you know, using the God's eye view of war. Once we, you know, can can use all our satellite technology from all around the world. We can just, you know, drone and zap, you know, all these people, and this is great. No Americans die. They forget to tell us that millions of, of uh, we, we just learned today that millions in um, Syria, half a million in Syria have died, you know. Um, we're just bombing Yemen, poisoning them. We can take over the entire Middle East we we'll take over China, we'll take over the Ukraine, we'll take all the oil. Um, this is war crime, 101. This is what Hitler wanted to do, and it came to us through, it's called the strategy of tension, the leave behind armies. This Daniel Ganser exposed this, that the plan at the end of World War II was to planned by the CIA, 1947 National Security Act, was uh, formed by Alan Dulles, an OSS, not, you know, he and his brother were both Nazi sympathizers. They, they worked with, they got Reinhard Gellin, who was the head, Hitler's head of intelligence, um, pulled him out and set him up as the CIA of West Germany through the BND group. It used to be called the Gellin Group. It's still there, doing the exact same thing, a great you know, center for spying on Russia, right? And so that's how, out of there, they operate Voice of America, Radio Free Europe, 
Radio Liberty, which we still pay for these influence campaigns. I mean, why we claim that we stopped the Cold War, we stopped the war on Russia in 91, but we haven't. It's been a covert, ongoing campaign. And we are now $27 trillion in debt. A trillion dollars a year is spent waging a war on innocent people, children. You know, they, they, there's no war. We haven't declared war. It, the reason we're doing this, I did been talking with the Chicago area peace action people. It's the importance of exposing this is that we have to stop it. We we won. Why are we spending 27 trillion dollar debt in 2000? Before these these guys stole the 2000 election through the Supreme Court, that's why I didn't bother to write about the Supreme Court. It's just a, all the same. It's populated with Bork, and they remember they tried to push Bork. These are all the ex Nixon people that formed after Watergate to to put in unitary executive power through their Federalist Society. Um, originalist interpretation of the Constitution, which means, which is that every decision can be pushed to the state. Let's just review Roe versus Wade and say, let the states decide. Because that's the way they did it in 1776. You know? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, we <laughs> right, Just because it's old doesn't mean it's bad. I, but the thing is, they are using it to to yeah i mean they use using it to undo all the civil rights they're undo the voting rights act they're undoing the the environmental i mean the few good things nixon did which was like you don't get to poison our water you don't get to destroy our earth you don't get to pull us out of the climate uh, the climate uh, agreement we were in you know so that we can maybe let the next generation survive no they actually, a woman was, was claiming it's, it's ecocide. They are deliberately planning the devastation of the planet. And then they're like, that's okay, we'll, we'll fly away somewhere. Or they'll be dead, so they don't care. You know, it, it's like they have dismantled every human right, every civil right. They are violating all our rights. And then throw, say, um, oh, unitary executive power, we have it, you know. Um, we, you know, Hitler had it, now we've got it. You know, we, we, we're in a state of emergency because we were, we were uh, somebody took down our World Trade Center. You know, we're, the terrorists are coming at us, right? And, and they don't fail to tell you that all the evidence that they're suppressing shows that they're the ones that did the 9-11. We know they did, and they're, you know, Cheney, uh, and that, but what we haven't been able to do, because we come here and Charlie goes, ah, oh, you can't prove it, you know, is like we need to have, you know, this might give us the ability to prove it, right? You know, we don't, I, we're tired of standing here and saying over and over again, it was an inside job. I went up to the police board. Um, I went there Thursday. I'd gone there two years ago saying, do you know that this was an inside job? Do you realize Rahm Emanuel's father was part of this air gun terrorist group? And actually, well, that's the other thing. Rahm Emanuel was there in the 90s, you know, when Ken Starr was suppressing, you know, focusing the whole thing on Monica Lewinsky. Ten minutes, thank you. Um, Rahm Emanuel, according to Sherman Skolnick, who used to be involved in this group, and Christopher Bolin and other investigative journalists who, who were reporting the inconvenient truth about Rahm Emanuel is that it, that Rahm Emanuel's father was an air gun terrorist. Uh, Christopher Bolin called and checked him, you know, and he that was responsible for bombing the King David Hotel, massacring the Palestinian village of Der Misson, and um, killing 125 women and children. And Rahm Emanuel is, is, was thought, there's records in England that he is this mega agent. But what, what he's also, what they are saying, and that nobody hears, so nobody believes you when you say it, is that he put Monica Lewinsky onto Bill Clinton in order to sabotage the, the, um, sabotage the 
Palestinian, uh, Israeli peace talks. See, Israel doesn't want peace. This is the bottom line. Their plan has been to take that whole area, and it's always been to kill whoever's in their way. And that is the truth. That's why I thank God, the Jewish Voice for Peace, and uh, they're trying to speak up about it. But it, there, there's a, a, there really is a, an influence campaign to, to assassinate me and anybody who writes about it or talks about it or exposes it by, you know, either you can assassinate people actually as they did with, with Danny Castellera, or they also, they will call you anti-Semitic, which is totally crazy. You know, and we, we cannot let politics block investigation into genocide and war crimes and what is essentially a coup d'etat of the United States. State-sponsored terrorism by our people and, and the whole intelligence Deep state, shadow government. You know, the um, my hope is that this promise, opportunity, rather than get buried or closed out by, by political interest groups, that we can get an, an honest, non-suppressed investigation. Excuse me, Helen. Uh, okay. Excuse me. Can we have order, please? Okay. Um, I think I'll end it. Well, one other I wanted to also add. The other software programs that this, so it does connect to, and all we have to do is connect the dots using technology. I know a guy named Bing Lu at UIC who, he, he had pointed out, he, he analyzes the internet, the sentiment analysis, and pointed out that the internet is divided into two acre chambers, actually three now, he says. The Republicans talking to the Republicans, the Democrats talking to the Democrats, and there's an entire third is misinformation. You know, we could start with him and prove using analysis of the cyber world, you know, exactly what messages are being sent by who and what messages are being suppressed by who. And the goal is to to pro stop it by prosecuting, exposing it, investigating, and prosecuting it. We, um, we also need to bring this, bring, you know, um, we'll be able to find out, you hear, you know, we hear all about Oliver Stone in the media, but the fact is that you never hear anybody talk about that Oliver Stone is the one that, that um, made the deal with Julian Assange uh, you know, to expose Hillary's leaks. This is what this is what these guys do. Uh, the Manafort Stone. It's a public relations tactic of of releasing misinformation. You know, right before an election. You know, so that a person uh, you know doesn't it gets everybody all confused, right? It, and I have to just say, I know this, and if anybody's got standing, because I, I, how do you get this in court? The woman that took over my stepfather was uh, working with Giuliani and Trump and uh, this whole PR. She made up this story. This is what they do that was put in the New Republic right before Hillary Clinton's health care plan was going through, saying that she read the whole bill and, and that it was uh, going to make sure that no Nobody, no more private health care insurance it would be available. That is not true. But the thing is, everybody has been so confused about, about health care that, you know, they, um, it never gets passed. Then she came and got involved. She also came up with the death panel idea. They, these guys are paid to make up big lies to hurt policies that would help the people. Right? These are the pay, this is how big lies take on a life of their own. And they're, it's a war against us. That's the thing, a war against liberals. At one point, I used to think, well, they, they're not all that bad, are they? Actually, I, I had heard, I recently watched the um, 1984, wonderful 1954 edition of it. And they show, um, you realize that the, like I said, that the, 
the misinformation. I mean, they're, what they're doing there is essentially a technique. He was talking about, really, they said he was talking about 1948. He was, th this is exactly the way we are being, there's the psychological operations are being planned by the CIA and the Mossad, you know, to, to they, you know, they really, and they are bringing in all the drugs. They, you know, they cover up that they brought, they started the drug war so they could, and they brought in all the cocaine and the opium and so they could, you know, arrest all those people, a genocide plan. And, um, but it's also, I always thought it's weird. They wanted to experiment with us um, to get us involved with drugs. And it, it does, they have deliberately dumbed us down so that we can't, you know, call them out. They, they are, um, they've taken over the law schools through the Federalist Society, and um, you notice that you don't see too many civil rights lawyers anymore. They're all, everybody is so deep in debt with law that they have to keep defending the corporations, right? That, this whole system has been stacked that, the, that you can't sue the corporation. You have to go to that state if you want to sue them. You have to hire an expensive lawyer if you want to sue them. You know, um, so they can poison our water, as we know they've done. And, um, you know, they, all they do is, like, pay a fine. They steal an election. Oh, pay a fine, you know, if it does raise that much. You know, so the reason I didn't talk about the judges, though I probably, I did look over it, um, Tom Hartman and all these really, you know, leading public intellectuals are all, you know, showing us piece of this puzzle, and it, it all leads up to the privatize, the privatization of our public estate, and the defense of that by our right-wing lawyers who claim it's libertarian, but in fact, they, it's liberty. But they, what they need is civil liberties, but. What about civil rights? You know, they're like, oh, okay. that's for the black people. You know, well, they don't need that, right? Uh, it's um, really a scary fascist right-wing conspiracy that is taken over, and uh, I'm hoping that this is going to be the a way we can bring it up, get it into the news, you know, and uh, and uh, stop it. So, anyhow, I'll take questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I'll, I, I'd like to ask the first one. He's, he's going to be the moderator. Tim's yeah. got the first question. The results from the Nevada caucus are just out, and it's having uh, Bernie Sanders in the lead, followed by Pete Buttigieg. Could you please give your uh, comments on perhaps maybe those, those on those guys who might be able to help clean up your so-called white-wing Republican mess? I, I strongly believe that Sanders, is, and Sanders or Warren, you know, Mike, I think Sanders is the guy, after, you know, as a investigator into, you know, the what the investigators are saying, there's a lot of evidence that Buttigieg, uh, his, the app that they used in Iowa was the shadow system. I do think that the right wing is uh, libertarian. You know, they're manufacturing anybody but Sanders. The way they did with Hillary Clinton. You know, they basically, I, the, the shocking thing is the Bloomberg, um, you know, woke up the other day, they said Bloomberg is proposing that he buy the Democratic Party, you know, um, because he can beat Trump. And just that's essentially what Hillary Clinton did. You know, in the end, even though Bernie had won all the votes, um, more votes, they went for her because they owed they owed her money. You know, she it's it's terrible. It's horrifying, really. And I'm sure that's what the republic both parties and uh, need to be investigated. They they need to be, uh, you know. Um, okay, let's cleaned up. Uh -huh. Next question. Next okay. question. Here we have a. Uh, All right, go ahead. Thank you. Do you just. Oh, wait, wait. He called on. David. He called yeah, on him. Thank you. All right, all right, David. Let's go. Sorry about that. I'll keep track here. All right, thanks. Uh, you were saying that uh, the uh, 
Republicans had made the uh, war on drugs. And uh, to my recollection, the war on drugs first became a quote unquote war on drugs under Lyndon Johnson. Oh, really? That's and. Nixon. Yeah, that was, I thought it was Nixon. Nixon. Yeah, yeah, my understanding is it it's Nixon. Nixon. Yeah, it was Nixon. Mm -hmm. Under Lyndon Johnson. It was what? No, it no. Hit it no. Seen it That's under, Rush Limbaugh saying that. That's a lie. No. Yeah. Uh, under uh, Lyndon Johnson, if, if he was before Nixon. Wasn't it the war on poverty? He was the war on poverty. He declared a war on poverty. People. But he also made a war on drugs. No. And Lyndon no. Johnson. It was Nixon. It was Nixon. Yeah, yeah, Nixon started it. One full at a time! Okay. Right. Don't yell that out or you'll be asked to leave, please. <laughs> you leave. Let's, 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 hey. let's keep Let's keep order. He's got a right to tell to people. Would you please? Like, yeah. Somebody's got to do some moderating. You've asked your question. I, I told you what I thought. If I can be allowed to finish. Let David finish. The fact is that See, this under the Lyndon Johnson administration, if a 22-year-old kid or a 20-year-old kid was caught with two joints in his pocket, he could do three to five years in prison. Yeah. That's right. All right. So, I don't know. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh -huh. Wait, she's next. I'm sorry. Sophie? Do you think a socialist will win over Trump? Yes, I do. I think that... So she asked, do I think a socialist could win over Trump? And I think we, if we can, actually would help to stop all this misinformation about socialism and Bernie Sanders and, and um, social Democrats and um, really, I, I, that's probably, that would be a good next speak, maybe for that labor, is that they, I'm really sure, you know, my stepfather was an Ayn Rand and Bernie, Milton Friedman type, and they they made this up. I mean, I, that this you know socialism is that. bad. I think it would be better for the economy. Uh, it, I don't think corruption is good for the economy. I don't think corporatism is good for the economy because it's only good for one percent. As God is into, you know, that they, they just manufacture their numbers. So the U.S. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, well, I don't want to lose my private insurance with Bernie Sanders. Anyway, uh, what I was going to say is you said Bush set up 9-11. I saw terrorists hijack four planes. I don't know what you saw. Well, I don't think you saw that, but I that's what the new, that's what the official story was. And that's the thing. That official story was put, manufactured into the media. I mean, there were so many lies in it that had been exposed. One was... You know, they, they're like, oh, that building came down, you know, and it hadn't even come down yet. You could see that, they, you know, news reporter reporting it. They, it was, yeah, the, Cheney organized this whole thing using, oh, that's the other one, P-TECH is another division, another form of, of, palant, of promise, is that the P-TECH system was this Indira Singe who was working, um, with meter and on a big project that through J.P. Morgan that was aligning um, the federal aviation uh, FAA with the uh, with the NIST or something, but they it enabled them to orchestrate these war. They were doing um, trials. Webster war Tarpley games. war games. Yeah, Webster Tarpley uh, who was. Really, so all, a lot of the best writing on this is done by people who had worked with Lyndon LaRouche's Executive Intelligence <laughs> Review. But, I mean, they are good reviews. They really are very, they, they dig into the conspiracies because there are conspiracies, you know. And But also, Lyndon LaRouche was brought down by a conspiracy, you know. So, he, I think that, I, like, I had um, my experience that, it was seeing this woman lying about me, about everything, and I, I really, she moved into our house, took over our house, and I, I could never go back in, but I realized she had my computer. She has all my records. You know, imagine a kind of, she's like Cruella DeVille in 
2001 Dalmatians, you know, moved in, took your family, everything you have, and has access to your computer. And I really, that's what we have. These guys have access to all our computers. And, it, and they're not, it's not a good thing. And then meanwhile, they're, you know, blaming it on Russians and the Democrats and, you know, Whoever, you know, um, it's it's really scary. Uh -huh. And it can be proved. Next question. So you had mentioned a lot of things were suppressed and whatnot. So how did you get a hold of it? And who suppressed it? Well the the story uh, well this the software was stolen. That's what's amazing. In okay, William Hamilton was hired by the Justice Department under Ed Meese to in the Reagan times or to create this software system that was put into 60 police departments across the country that gave access to all the prosecutors' records, um, prosecutor management information system. It's a great idea. Right now, if you go down to Cook County, everything's on paper because they don't want it. I, I was on a grand jury. I'm like, where's the automation? They go, oh, we don't want automation because the, the prosecutor's information system was stolen, okay? It was passed to Rafi and Tun, who through Ed Meese had him, he showed up his house and he showed him this software and he goes, oh, I'll buy it. And then he, um, he just, he got a copy supposedly from Orr or from from Meese or but William Barr was there too and then he took it so all of this has been written up um, he took it to California and had it enhanced and then with the spying capability and then he um, they had him put in something that it could never be traced if anybody went in and tried to find the Trojan horse trapdoor they um, then they it would immediately explode, you know, and so, or something, you know, and so then basically William Hamilton kept saying, wait a minute, you know, oh, meanwhile they, they stopped paying him and they said, you, you know, forget it, this wasn't yours, this is not yours. He kept saying, this is my software, this is my software, and so he kept, he kept suing them and this Danny Castlerero, a writer who, like me, was interested in this case, wrote it all up and then showed up dead at, um, showed up one day sliced up after he was going to go present it to the Justice Department. And actually when I started researching this deep state stuff, after my stepfather was taken away by Cruella DeVille, um, and I, I started connecting the dots on who is this woman? She worked for the Manhattan Institute, the Olin Foundation. She she actually um, I really she worked like to make you know like cigarettes seem like they're okay, and I mean that was like her specialty is is covering up you know um, all the lobbyists for lobbyists, right? But she. Um, is connected to, uh, let me see, I, a guy, I started researching the Manhattan Institute. It turns out he was, it was started by, built by William Casey, the head of the CIA. And, uh, you know, an Olin Foundation is where this other guy who was writing about this stuff, what showed up dead, you know, and um, so anybody that writes about this stuff ends up dead, you know, and but then somebody, this guy I knew that worked at the Defense Department wrote me, go, Ellen, you don't want to end up dead, do you, if you keep writing about this stuff? And so I, I kind of looked the other way, but um, it's, at this stage, I, I'm desperate to, to expose this. Mm -hmm. Next question over here. Um, you talked about how Rafi Eitan and Edward Meese um, passed the Promise software on to Bin Laden through a Ukrainian and then a Russian oligarch. Do you have the names of them or have any more specific? Yeah, yeah, that Sergei Moglin and um, all of this is in the best book is Gordon Thomas, Robert Maxwell, Israel Super Spy. He interviewed tons of people and um, and the other. Oh, this is another one that is really important. They built on this. Has anybody heard of Michael Rupert? Um, Rupert? Crossing the Rubicon. He details all of this in there. He researches, you can find him on YouTube, uh, writing. 
it, you know, he's just so impressive. And then he ended up dead, though they say he committed suicide. But um, they, they took, you know, chased him and put girls on him and, and did a lot before, um, kind of drove him to it. But he also wrote a movie, Collapse, was in Collapse. And, and so they uncovered a lot of this. But um, yeah, the, it's the same. It's interesting, I mean, that what came out is that it was given to him, and then he sold it to the KGB, and then they and they got to Osama bin Laden before 9-11, according to him. And um, and it, so apparently the Mossad was really angry that uh, that he leaked, you know, sold it to Robert Maxwell, sells all this stuff, right? And he was also working, you know, with, with um, uh, the recent guy that got hung. Yeah, um, let's just clarify. Robert Maxwell's daughter, Gillan, was Jeffrey Epstein's girlfriend at yeah. Hanworth. Yeah, so they're all, it's so all in the side how operation. Epstein is distantly connected to the Iran Contra scandal, aren't you? Well, uh, the Iran Contra. What it, what it does show is how they videotape people and use this kind of um, blackmailing. You know, like you interview them at their islands, you know, and then they can go and blackmail politicians into always voting for Israel or, um, you know, otherwise they'll get exposed. This is what you saw in the Snowden movies, too. And they tracked down Khashoggi with the same software. And Khashoggi was, was tracked down with this. Thank you. Yeah, that's really important because Saudi Arabia has it and uh, it's in their phones. You know, they're all connected. We need to follow the dots there. Uh -huh. Yes, now what you were saying about 9-11 being perpetrated by the Bush and Cheney, 15 of the and Mossad. No, 15 of the hijackers and the Saudi Saudis. Arabia. Let him finish. Mm -hmm. Osama bin Laden is a Saudi. All roads, yeah. all roads lead to Riyadh. If anything, it was an act of war by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> but, and they had the software too, so it's the software that's we can use how they cover it up, how what? they orchestrate it. They work together, the intelligence um, department, you know, these kind of rogue intelligence people in Saudi Arabia. And so there, it was definitely a, I, I'm beginning to think really that the KGB, I'd read somewhere that, that, that Putin is a, um, was put into office by, as an MI6 agent. But uh, there is a sense, Anthony Sutton wrote that that the Rothschild bankers and the, these people, yeah, they do. Or the the big banks, the central banks. Oh, that there is evidence how they use the money out of this. The original thing was that they they hack into Credit Suisse Bank and they know who did it, Robert Lindjek or somebody. But they um, they also uh, I don't know whatever. Yeah, what. Mm -hmm. Charlie has something, I think. Charlie, you got a question? We're on first question now, first round. We'll come back. Charlie. Yeah, uh, well, in the, the agencies of the government in the United States, there is, every agency has an office of inspector general huh. entrusted with in, in conducting investigations. Yeah, but he's there, captured too. Look at it. And all sorts of documents within the government are encrypted especially those that might get leaked out. Can you identify yourself as you gave yourself some sort of title? Inspection of the investigator independent investigator. And independent your counsel. investigation, I'm curious, what do you Google search? <laughs> no, I've got 40 years you, of this, and the main you, thing is I'm honest, in, and I will get... Can you get in my email? They don't investigate themselves, and that's why I need so the power get to in get into you. I'd like to. That's what that'll be my first step when so they make yeah. me investigate so in general. I, I, yeah. We've got theories they about you, about Charlie. You. <laughs> what, what are you Aren't you with the FBI? Oh, you know, so we have to get in there. We have to have the discovery power well, of an independent investigator. Based on <laughs> no, based on what you Google told me. Search. No, you told me that you were investigating. So you put together the Googles with your own 
It's like Columbo. You, it's Columbo, and you connect the dots, and you put them on the witness stand, and you ask them questions under oath, right? So I guess it's, you subpoena them and put them under oath. So they don't get to cover up lies. I don't understand. It's incriminating evidence on the internet. Let it go. For Google. Let it go. worst criminals in the world. Yeah, Ellen, you mentioned the software that enabled uh, countries to uh, to hack in and uh, attack the countries, electrical grids and things like that. Was that called Prism? Yeah, that's... What's the question? The, oh, he, the type okay. of software that can allow countries or, or independent bad actors to right. attack other countries' electrical grids and uh, that, other infrastructure. That's something I saw and I I've understand through Snowden's uh, Prism and EPS Keyscore. But I, I have those books. I didn't have time to go back in and dig it out. But um, but yeah, they did. I've read that in a couple of places. That um, they brag about it. They use it as a selling right, like like they sell the atom bomb. You know, they're like, look, with this, we can shut out all the, we can cut off this whole country. So these are basically weapons. Is look at where our technology development has been going for the last. 20, 40, 60 years. It, it's more and more weapons, which um, that's basically it. They also, the bio um, technology, you know, uh, weapons. Uh, it's, and the, you know, the sad thing is you hear like, you know, this, these, these orchestrated campaigns, you know, Obama, you said that there's a red line, so why don't you start bombing these guys? And, you know, who created Anybody that false, you know, that chemical attack? These are, almost all of them are like false flag attacks. So that we can kind of bully our, our puppet president. That's how Ken, how Carter got bullied into, um, you know, going over to the Middle East and, you know, kind of tricked through Brzezinski, you know, there, Kennedy got tricked into Cuba, you know, where there's, I mean, you, it all really, a lot of the best research I, comes out of the Kennedy investigations, um, those who investigate Kennedy and 9-11. This guy, Lawrence Gino, wrote a great book, you know, 50 Years of Deep State from, from JFK to 9-11. And you realize that it's the same pattern in practice that, you know, they, our CIA, even though hardly anybody, my father doesn't know about it, and it's hard to bring it up, is that Kennedy, that was orchestrated by the CIA and the Mossad, and it was an inside job. And that, how did they coordinate it? Well, these, these guys have connected it, but um, the trick is to get it why didn't it get prosecuted? Why didn't they stop the CIA? Actually, the, you, what you can see is um, Kennedy was, had fired the Alan Dulles of the CIA you know, a few days before he, they, he, Alan Dulles snuffed him. And then Alan Dulles would, led the Warren investigation. So basically covers up the investigation. You know, we've got the criminals running their own investigations. The reason I see this is you know, I've been watching the John Birch trying to get those who were put away by John Birch, and I realized that what, daily our mayor was the was the um, attorney was the state's attorney prosecutor and worked with Birch, covered up Birch. So it's the torturers, the evil ones, are also the ones that prosecute innocent people. You know, and cover up the the guilty ones who, who they worked with. So they're all covering themselves up, which is why right now they're not letting themselves out of, they, they're they keeping, this week, a guy named Gerald Reed, who has been 30 years wrongfully convicted, after a lot of time, I watched the last few trials, they're like, they had to spend a lot of time getting past the FOP, police department, which is a Mossad operation, basically, and they kept trying to prove, they were determined to prove that this didn't happen. You know, they clap when Burge comes into the room. You know, they, they, they're like, that didn't happen, that didn't happen. They'll, they'll do lot, anything they can to destroy the evidence, kill the witnesses, you know, um, to, they get false confessions out of people who didn't do it and protect the ones that did do it. So I've been so desperate to 
to, they just put this guy away. And, um, and so this is partly why I see this pattern in practice locally and have been trying to speak up because Robert Milan is, was trying, going to run for state's attorney. And now it's Bill Conway who is going to, who is the son of the Carlisle Group founder, who was, you know, known to be a major orchestrator of 9-11 and, and the war state, you know. And so he's going to get in there. And But I have to say, of uh, most concern is, um, I, <clears throat> this, um, again, Charlie Beck, I actually applied to be chief of police. This is how, and so I put in my application. They say, we're taking applications. And I, I put it in, and I went down there on, on Thursday, and I said, you know, um, I just want everybody to know that, you know, I'm, I put in my application, and I haven't heard from you, so uh, I'm going to push it, you know, if I have to sue them. But, boy, you should have looked at them. Because Charlie Beck is, you know, I said, Burge, cover up daily. Uh, right, they cut me off right before I got to Charlie Beck. But Charlie Beck is Palantir. The reason he is being imposed on our city by Lori Lightfoot is because he has he works this Palantir system that is going to enable all the you know illegal immigrants to be snuffed away, even though they claim we have we have uh, some kind of sanctuary laws. They, you know, they're going to probably be on me. Everybody who complains goes down to this police department does have a profile built on them. We know that. I mean, this, they're, we are run as a police state at every level. And they say, think global, act local. And so I'm acting local and trying to, because you can't see, when you see an evil prosecutor like Mylan, I went up to him after this. I said, why would you continue to prosecute an innocent person? He goes, get away from me. You know, I mean, these people don't like to be exposed, right? You know, and um, it is a kind of dangerous business. So that's why I try to do it in the open, right? Um, mm -hmm. I try to wrap up. We have a couple more questions, then we'll go to rubbery bottles. Do you, do you have a question yet? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Can speak? Louder, Mention please. Speak up, human speak up. Oh, the human experiment. I, I guess the Nazis did it, and so we did some too. Yeah. What's your question? Yeah, the human experiment. What do I know about oh. that? Yeah, you know, the human experiments that were done by the Nazis, and and yeah, this is what back. they... It was, it was the Marshall you, Islands. A lot of books on there, right? Yeah, the Marshall Islands, okay. And um, I know that... We used some blacks. And the, oh, the, yeah. they trained, uh, literally, the Mossad, and so you. this is what you see going on at our black sites in Chicago. We have Homan Square. But you see, we're, we're, we're trained by the Israeli Defense Force. And if you see these videos of what they come in, pick up this little Palestinian boy and beat, beat him up, you know, and then they come out and they can become informants. That's what I mean by 1984, you know. A lot of them can take a lot of torture, but when you make them have to turn on their friends, that makes them really, that makes them painful stuff in these people. And they put them in isolation. I know a lot of them have been in isolation for years. Uh -huh. All right, so you had mentioned that, uh, that, that's, that if libertarians and right wing, if it wasn't for them, people would think socialism was good thing. I do think they're part of they, the neocons. They've been behind so it. So James Burnham started so it. So does that mean yeah, that the, li the libertarians and the conservatives are the ones that uh, starved millions of people in Russia? Yeah. And, uh, was Actually, it, there it, was a connection between the Nazis and the. Um, oh, the and was Russian it the thing. was it the Republicans and the libertarians the that that <laughs> that killed millions of people in China? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, actually, I mean, you could blame it on, on, I'm saying, I said, you know, LBJ was a Democrat, right? I mean, I do think at the political level, he was also very close to the Mossad. And so these people were, the ones that are in power, were had to take some money, and they had to make some promises. And you notice very few of them are both saying anything about foreign policy, or Israel, or making any commitments to get us out of the wars. Um, and, but I do want to say also that Mar 1984, um,
George Orwell said that James Burnham, who was the co-founder of the National Review with James Buckley, they were all part of the CIA. And I recently read his book. I knew he wrote The Manager's Revolution, and I thought, you know, this is, it's kind of, kind of like a counter-revolution. But his book on um, national suicide really says ugly things about liberals. I mean, he really considers us like Paris, you know, really evil, crazy people. So there is a war on liberal. It's called illiberal, you know, and they, they it's a propaganda war. It, as a whole class, we're all lumped in there together, right? Have you ever read Ayn Rand? You know, the parasites, the police, you know, the welfare state, you know, the ones that want to tax us and give them free health care, you know, I mean, and the truth is, it would be good for the economy. Hello, it, you know, it's a fascist big lie that any that China is, you know, the worst thing in the world, and Russia was the worst thing in the world because it was actually this Nazi military operation. So was it pointing communists the, that killed people? No, no, no. The Bolsheviks are not your average communists. That's what you have to realize. I'm sorry, the Bolsheviks and Trotsky were put in there by our like secret police. Really? And that, yes, they by, were. Which which people? Specifically, okay. I can name we'll cut them. Cut this off now. We can talk about I, this. James Burnham. All right, James all right, Burnham all right, and James right. and Sugar. Out, time out. The Let's entire in the 30s. Burnham. James Burnham. Okay. And the James revolution Buckley. was in the Ellen. Right. Yeah, I want question. to convince these guys. It I really do. We need right. to have a debate. If I can uh, get my question. You got the last no. question. Excuse me, Miss Corley. I suppose that. The fact that Russia put missile bases in Cuba in direct violation of the Monroe Doctrine, that that didn't have anything to do with it, that uh, Kennedy was merely tricked into the Cuban Missile Crisis. Well, they the were CIA. trying to start a World War One by the whole group of them. World War Three was has been their plan all along, you know, to instigate. Wars and actually, they it could have led to atomic warfare, and which is not a good thing if no, Kennedy's good. brother hadn't gone over there and managed to talk the Russian subway guy into not starting pushing the button for World War okay. for atom bombs. And Let's, go Let's go to rebuttals. Let's go to rebuttals. We're going to rebuttals. No, we're going to rebuttals. This is rebuttal you can bring it, time. Anybody it wants to give a rebuttal, raise your hand. Get your hands up because you're not coming up later if you don't have a hand. All right, how many? One, two, okay, three, four. Okay, only four rebuttals. Everybody gets 12 minutes. No, 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 we'll go about five. Nobody's got the hands up. All right, again, let's take Is another count. Even listening here? <laughs> another count for rebuttals. Rebuttals. One, rebuttals. Two, three, four. I know Charlie's got one. Five, 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 seven, eight, you can do it too, don't you? Eight, 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 eight times three is twenty-four. Yeah. We'll, okay, come on. We'll get your usual three minutes. Uh, 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 what, three or four? Okay. Uh, you know, uh, I need your attention, sir. Sir? Oh, what's his name? Uh, you know, you're thinking that... What's your name? Name? My name is Justin. Justin. You're, not you. Him. Oh, this one. Here? Yeah. What, what, what was your you're name? thinking of the Tuskegee Airmen. Vic. You know, you're thinking... Vic. Vic, you're thinking of the Tuskegee Vic. Airmen. They, those were the black people that were experimented on. They were deliberately given syphilis. and uh, Maybe they weren't deliberately given syphilis, but they were not treated for syphilis to find out the course of the disease. And another time that we experimented, in fact, one of our officials who was in the military, and you could Google the expression, more like us than mice, more like us than mice, because when we dropped the bombs in the Marshall Islands and people were complaining that we were using the Marshall Islands Islanders as experimental animals, uh, this guy said, well, they are more like us than mice. You know, and this he was referring to human beings in the Marshall Islands when he said that. We vacated them, though. Yeah, listen, I, uh, I, this isn't what I wanted to say. I, uh, as a perfect illustration of some of the stuff that Ellen was talking about, uh, um, there was a 
subject matter hearing yesterday at the Philandic building, and this, and, and this was sponsored by the, um, the Illinois uh, House of Representatives in the Illinois House, not the National, Illinois, from Springfield. These are the representatives in the Energy and Environment Committee, and they had this hearing yesterday. And it was very amazing because it dealt with, and you could also Google this, the FERC rule, F-E-R-C, uh, Federal Energy Regulations Administration, uh, not a uh, uh, commission, Federal Energy Regulations Commission. And the FERC has been completely infiltrated by uh, Trump's fascists, and they have, I, I can't take the time to explain this because I've only got three minutes. Hey, could we have it quiet? Thank you. It's very disturbing. I'm sorry. We're going to have to kick you out if you're loud. Hey. Um, anyway, it has to do with how electricity is marketed. And the upshot of the FERC ruling, which came out in December of 2019, or 29, uh, December, it, you could Google FERC ruling, it was December of 2018. The, you trying to shut me up, so I don't give a shit about you guys. All right, play nice, boy. Why is... Play nice. I really can't concentrate. Oh, yeah, bullshit. Let's be respectful hey, of everyone. On. Yeah, tell him to click bug no, people. Every, yeah, everyone yeah. be respectful Why to everybody else, okay? Get the Let people speak when there's... When it's time to speak. Okay. Okay. Um, the, the upshot of the whole thing is, in in short, there's there's one thing called the MOPR. That stands for minimum uh, minimum offered price requirement. So when a utility company sells electricity to the distributor. Uh, they have to either sell it at the minimum offered price requirement or underneath or under that. No, they can, they can't get, they cannot go under it. So that if you are a producer of electricity and you can produce a milliwatt uh, a, mil, a milliwatt hour for two cents, and the MOPR is six cents you're not going to be able to sell it for two cents. You have to bid six cents. And this is a perfect example of how corporations enjoy socialism, but customers and citizens enjoy capitalism. Because we have to pay what they say, but they were protecting corporations by doing this they did not want upstarts coming in and selling electricity below market. So they made a rule that you could not bid below the market, and they call this the MOPR. That was part of it. Um, that is so flagrant <laughs> and so awful that I'm having a, I, I should have taken notes as to what I wanted to say. The other thing is called the capacity market. And the capacity market is a, a mechanism by which the FERC, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, said, um, if you are already receiving a subsidy, you may continue to receive that subsidy. But if you are a new electrical company coming into the market, you have to pay a fee in order to bid on the price of your electricity, which means that coal, oil, nuclear, which are already in the market, can continue to receive their subsidies and meet the minimum price requirement, whereas anything new that comes into the market that is not receiving a subsidy may not, has to pay a fee to enter the market, which simply meant that it's a bailout of of the fossil fuels and, and nuclear's plain and simple bailout, and it also inhibits any state, or the state of Illinois, from 
reaching its climate goals. Now, this is directed at PJM. PJM stands for Pennsylvania, Jersey, and Maryland, but it is a distributive RTO. It's full of these um, regional transportation uh, organization, RTO, regional transportation organization. PJM is an RTO, and PJM serves Northern Illinois. And, you know, and all of the, the uh, it goes clear back to the East Coast and down to the Southwest. It's the biggest RTO in the United States. And this new FERC ruling directed itself at PJM. MISO and the other RTOs don't have to conform to it, but uh, PJM does. And they were given a deadline for conf confirmation, you know, like, nine, like 30 days after the rule was set down so that they don't really have time to process it. Um, all I can say about this is it's um, a very fascist uh, rule and it is destroying anybody's attempt to control climate change. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Doug Binkley. Um, I consider myself a good friend of Ellen uh, Corley, and uh, hopefully she'll still think that after uh, all of the uh, all the critiques I have of her talk. I'm just kidding. Um, Ellen touched on a tremendous number of topics. Uh, just uh, uh, and that's part of the thing. She's all over the place. So um, I came here kind of expecting she was going to uh, talk about Tom Hartman's uh, um, issues that he brings up in his uh, book. Uh, about the Supreme Court, which I forgot the name and I left it back there, but uh, the hidden history of the Supreme Court, I guess, and uh, uh, betrayed America, something like that. I, I think I'm pretty close. Um, all of these things are interrelated, though, so, um, and we could have wow. program after program about uh, what has been happening to our country and how it's been betrayed by, by such a large number of criminals and fascists, um, scoundrels, uh, uh, like, you, you, like you can't believe, except that it is happening. And, we're, we're seeing it in the news constantly. Um, so re going back into 9-11 and things like that, I think we should try to concentrate on the current things um, and the things that are assaulting our country. And Ellen's mentioned, uh, uh, she called a lot of people fascists that uh, deserve to be called it. Um, she went into a, mentioned a whole lot of names. I'm going to have to uh, investigate them myself. I am have been concerned for a long time about disability um, of uh, uh, bad actors or intelligence people um, or uh, uh, government actors. Uh, I mean, the Russians have been attacking our elections uh, now definitely since 2016, and they're attacking our election today, and they're using all sorts of uh, tricks, uh, some of which is just out in the open, things on Facebook and stuff like that. Now, uh, Snowden, of course, uh, Ellen mentioned him. Um, he, of course, uh, uh, took it uh, uh, on himself, took a, a ter had to terribly go into exile to Russia after revealing um, uh, capabilities that our intelligence community had. And this was years back. Things are happening so fast, it's hard to keep up. Uh, most of you know that I'm with a group called Refuse Fascism and a few other groups. Um, um, uh, there's a, a rather smaller group that uh, myself and friend, a friend set up that we can't wait till uh, 2020, meaning November 2020, so we have to change the name because it already is 2020. But uh, I joked one time that I hoped that 2020 would be the year that America sees clearly. It's not working out that well. Uh, the fascists seem to be winning some of the early rounds like they did in World War II. Uh, you know, Hitler had a great run, and Trump is having a great run now. Um, Mr. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Orange Hitler there, um, or whatever you want to call him. Uh, <laughs> I just want to put in a, uh, I want to mention uh, that I respect Ellen so much for the work she's doing about people that have been uh, falsely incarcerated, falsely convicted of crimes that they didn't do. It seems like that's cropping up all over the place. Uh, Kamala Harris got in trouble for a previous um, uh, days as prosecutor with some cases that were, you know, negligently brought. They, you know, and uh, Amy Klobuchar might have been guilty of uh, a similar type of thing. So that's 
in going around as part of the history of the United States and having a justice system that's either corrupt or negligent or inept, uh, incompetent, uh, whatever. A lot of people have suffered. Uh, I have to wrap this up, I guess, so I'll just mention that if you have a chance to go on the internet and look at uh, creative-resistance.us, and that could stand for United States or us, uh, meaning that uh, we, uh, it's up to us, it's up to us, it's one of the slogans of refused passion, it's up to us to take back our country. And through creative resistance, I hope we can do it. All right, Thank next. You. Oh, it's just me. Oh, I can have this? Yeah. Well, I thought the talk today was going to be about the Supreme Court, but uh, I, 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 I've had some notes on uh, surveillance. All right, let's have order. Surveillance software. And uh, this, this has started since 9-11. In the United States, then really when they had the Patriot Act and and, and uh, the, the main uh, ones who did it was Google, Facebook, Amazon, and micro, Microsoft. This uh, surveillance uh, technology, mm -hmm. and some of the things that they do with this is uh, well, actually this is the third decade of this digital technology, and uh, they, uh, a fa a fa a Facebook can can uh, record your heart rate, uh, the menstrual cycle, the real estate. Uh, your, your real estate transactions, and uh, t uh, they can target your your uh, uh, the 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 purchase you purchases you make the commercial and, and, and they and they do this to make a profit. They, they do this to make a profit. They can, uh, the, the software can also intervene. Uh, for behavior modi modification. If they think you're a disloyal uh, American, they can take action on you. They, they can control control you. And uh, oh. they have the software to do this. Oh. Uh, facial scans to days. control the population. Oh. They, they can control your, see your posts, your, your pictures, you, 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 what, you, what you look at on the internet. And uh, they have a, tr they had a trillion <coughs> data points to predict about us. Mm -hmm. they, I, I didn't realize until I just read it recently that, that, that this uh, surveillance technology, they could suspend your, your uh, tech, the telecom, your, your uh, cell phone and things like that. And they could, you think it just happened, they can do it. Yeah. And uh, hu human uh, prediction, this software can predict for, for, for profit, they do this to, to make a profit, these companies. And uh, a, a data, they can, they can access your tax retor returns, the, your, your banks, your bank statements, your purchases. I'm not par paranoid about this, but I just read this recently, so I just want to convey that to you. Yeah. And your history, or if you, uh, this software can access you if you have a criminal history, your medical records. And then they can, software can control censorship, C censorship, like in 100 years ago when censorship was the big issue. But now they, they can control that too, this uh, surveillance technology. Yeah. Yeah, very good, mm -hmm. very well said. Thank you. I want to remind you guys that fascism grew out of the Italian labor and syndicalist movement, and you guys would agree with much of their platforms uh, if you guys read it. So. <clears throat> uh, I share a lot of the skepticism that Ellen has and, uh, you know, the distrust for power and uh, whatnot. I just, uh, right diagnosis, wrong prescription. Um, I did leave the, uh, I did leave to go to the bathroom a couple times during the talk, uh, so I may have missed some things, but I heard the word Mossad uh, quite a bit. I, I heard Rothschild maybe once or twice. Israel, I heard many times. Now, I don't know if I was in the bathroom or not, but I didn't hear the word Zionist nor the word Satanist. Uh, had I, then I may have won dog whistle bingo. Thank you. Yay. <coughs> You're next.
I just like to say thanks to Ellen for the talk. Um, I like to note to people who are asking questions afterwards, um, not all the question sessions have to devolve into debates between socialism and fascism. You could actually talk about the question at hand, or the, the topic at hand. Um, so, let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to remember what I was trying to say here. So. I'm a, I'm a, I appreciate that Ellen has, has uh, criticized Israelis. Um, you know, Jewish criminals exist. That fact doesn't mean that all Jewish people are criminals, and I don't think that Ellen was trying to insinuate that all Jewish people are guilty of any particular thing that she was saying that the Israelis may have played a hand in. Um, there were four countries who tried to warn America about 9-11 uh, before it happened. Israel was one of them. The others were Britain, Russia, and Italy. And also Condoleezza Rice tried to warn George W. Bush. So it's not like there are no Israeli footprints. And another gentleman was correct to point out there were a whole lot of Saudi footprints. And I think U.S., Israelis, Saudis, and British, um, and Webster Tarpley said Pakistan, uh, he's, he's, he said that uh, those five countries did 9-11. So we need to look at you know, the possibility that Jeffrey Epstein was working for Britain and or Saudis and or Israelis, maybe a couple other countries. Got to look at you know the passport they found in his safe. So it is not anti-Semitic uh, or anti you know or Judeophobic to say that there may be some Jewish spies or spies who claim to be Jewish floating uh, floating around about there. Um, Israel does not represent all Jewish people. There are plenty of Jewish people who criticize the state, like Chomsky, uh, Rabbi Yaakov Shapiro. Mike does not work. Uh, I don't I don't know. <laughs> Speak a little closer. But yeah, I, I appreciated bringing up this topic because. Um, it's, it's not Jewish control over our government. We have to worry about, you know, congressmen securing uh, contracts to allow Israelis to manufacture spy equipment that is used in Congress. Like, we have to be making that equipment ourselves and have a little, little more security uh, in their own country. You know, tonight I have to bring up something of a political movement that is about 25 years old. And that is, something happened in 1992 on MTV with a release of some cartoons that have greatly influenced American politics. And what is that cartoon? Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> Their influence upon the American electorate has been massive for the last 25 years. And I can't believe it's been 25 Help! years since they've been uh, God bless up you, and are running. Some of the caricatures that ran in those original cartoon series, if you can overlook the seventh grade potty humor, were actually pretty far reaching for their time. You know, particularly when President Clinton visited uh, Highland High School, and Beavis gets up there, I am the President of the United States, people of the most powerful nation on earth, and we're here to kick your ass. <laughs> Funny how, in a sense, Bush, just a few years later, was kind of doing that same philosophy. Particularly, there was other episodes, particularly lampooning Rush Limbaugh, particularly lampooning other political characters. Again, I think it was one of the most creative series that MTV ever made. And probably the last time I watched MTV was in 1992. But from, for years, if you take a look and you put Beavis and Butthead in any kind of political movement, you're gonna see some good biting sarcasm, some really good uh, political memes involved with it. And in a lot of chance, even Greta, our climate change activist, has been lampooned with some created Beavis and Butthead cartoons. But the thing you got to remember is this. A lot of times we've seen a dumbing down of our intelligent dialogue with our, <coughs> with our uh, stuff, I mean with our American politics. We've seen a lot of our Republicans and Democrats in Congress act like Beavis and Butthead after they matured about 25 years later on. So let's uh, give this cartoon and Mike Judge the credit where credit is due. He did found a good political movement. He did do some good predictions using Beavis and Butthead. And I think tonight, 
with Ellen and her conspiracy theories has proven my point. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. This has not been a contention or a fight or a contest uh, uh, between some kind of a uh, conspiracy that uh, Miss Corley wants to contend is the uh, American uh, right, uh, but rather this has been a contention between communism and capitalism. Yes. Between between socialism and Americanism. I'll, I'll be the first one to tell you that America is not 100% capitalist. America has a mixed economy. But if, as Ms. Corley uh, contends, if we had a guaranteed annual wage, or if we had welfare state, or if we had a number of other uh, socialist type things, then everything would be fine. And of course, uh, her and her organization would let up. But the fact is, they'd let up until next week, and then they'd go after some other aspect of American uh, of Americanism because what they want is the downfall of America. They want the downfall of Americanism. They want to bring about socialism and communism. And if we were starving in the streets and dying and, and having all the terrible things happening to us that happened in Russia and China, at that point she'd say, good. Now you get what you deserve. So we have to be very leery of these people. Thank you. That was completely unfair. I had nothing to do with being leery. All right, ready? Let's, next presenter. Next presenter. Timothy Leary. All right. <laughs> a couple of observations here that All right. people have not uh, gotten so far. Let's let consent order, please. Do we have order, please, here? Charlie and I will wrap it up here soon. Uh, number, before anybody leaves, I would like to give them a piece of information. Helen, uh, Ellen held up a book called <coughs> Crossing the Rubicon by Michael Rupert. That was one of the first things I read or stumbled onto about a comprehensive analysis of what happened on 9-11 and who was responsible. And there's a bunch of other stuff in that book, not just about 9-11, touching on the various bits and pieces of the intelligence community that Ellen talked about today. Am I correct on that? Michael Rupert's book, Crossing the Rubicon. When was it written? It, it's written in like 2004. 2002. 2002, maybe. That came out, it was an early analysis. 04. 04, but right after the forensic evidence became worldwide well known about 9 11. For those of you that don't know, seven buildings were destroyed on the day of 9 11. The media filmed the first two and sold it as a terrorist attack. Seven buildings were either vaporized completely or totally demolished with explosives. 9 11 was a giant real estate fraud to get money from the insurance companies for terrorist insurance so they'd have money to build the new tower that was planned on that site after the old obsolete buildings were cleared and the demolition was done in broad daylight and sold as a terrorist attack, so they killed two birds with one stone. And the myth of 9-11 is what is driving our military efforts all over the world to bomb people in countries that have oil and control the fields. Number one. Number two, conspiracies. Um, we have to note that 
people yell conspiracy when they don't want to face the reality of what's happening. Early on, it's what I've been calling the Galileo curve for 20 years. Galileo was one of the first famous people to pre present what was called a conspiracy, that the Earth revolved around the sun. He had to re recant or they would have burned him at the stake. At one time in this country, you could get uh, attacked by corporate people if you published evidence that asbestos was a health hazard. Yeah, you were one time considered, you were, back in the 50s, it was a conspiracy theory. If you went against all the doctors that were used to promote cigarettes, doctor, my doctor smokes Chesterfield, puts zest in your life, all kinds of things. And cigarettes were given away. I was in the military. We got free cigarettes. I was allergic. But the military was giving people free cigarettes, as many as you want, to calm your nerves. Virtually everybody in the military spoke up until about 10, 15 years ago. At one time it was considered outlandish to think that we should have smoke-free buildings. That was some kind of a conspiracy to cut into the profits of God-given people that uh, have the right to light up and you know, sell cigarettes everywhere to kids and profit. Well, once you learn the reality, it's no longer a conspiracy. It's accepted as fact. And now to invite Bill Lee down here to give us bald face lies He's for coming. another hour on 9-11 is uh, about as gross a distortion of free speech as you can make. A uh, free speech forum is something where you're, you're supposed to exchange ideas, not to bury an audience in bullshit and propaganda to keep them from finding out what the reality is. For those of you that haven't seen MSNBC tonight, Chris Matthews on MSNBC just put out a statement saying that four more years of Trump would be better, more beneficial for the country Sorry. than the Democrats uh, electing Bernie Sanders or any Democrat. Uh, Sean Hannity said, Sean Hannity said that Nixon was impeached because he lied to Congress. Bill Clinton was impeached because he lied. Why are they picking on Trump? He never lied to anybody. He just passed his 16,400 bald-faced lie. The man lies like normal people breathe. For those of you that didn't see it, the smirking chimp ran an article two days ago, a uh, famous uh, 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 author, I think it's Jamie O'Neill, he wrote about the seven deadly sins. He said the reason people are having trouble getting a handle on Trump is they, they don't want to face the reality that Trump exhibits all seven deadly sins on a daily basis. The man is not incompetent. He's not just dishonest. He's evil. Trump is the essence of evil, and we have to recognize that. We were taught in, 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 in uh, Sunday school, we were all taught that there's good and evil in the world. Well, why are people so reticent or uh, so opposed to just looking at reality in the face and say, Trump is following Dick Cheney. Those two people should have a picture in the dictionary next to the word evil. They just radiate evil. Trump, Trump enjoys hurting and bullying people. That's who he is. Trump is just re getting ready to take away the unionization of 750 federal employees in the military. Don't have the right to a union or a pension anymore. It's an all-out attack on American people, American rights, and also, one last point, we have a lot of socialism in this country. The military is socialist. Well, we have welfare in this country, welfare for billionaires that's a thousand times bigger than the welfare that people at the bottom get for food stamps. We're shoveling money to billionaires in massive amounts. It's just welfare for billionaires. And for those of you that followed nuclear power, nuclear power was welfare for the executives that built it. It was supported with state dollars. No nuclear power plant ever made a profit for the investors. Thank you. You're up. Let's thank our speaker. Nice presentation on a very topics here. It'll be eclectic as usual. Um, a little hard to figure out which one the focus is on. Um, first of all, regarding investigations. There's a term investigations repeated a number of times. It's doing an investigation. Another gentleman here is doing the investigation. Um, 
My job when the government involved in investigation, reading them, the results of them, tearing them apart, uh, representing the individuals who were subject to investigation. Uh, and later on, I took the case to Congress on uh, three respects regarding investigations themselves. Investigations which should not have been undertaken and which can be malicious, can destroy one's career, can uh, terminate promotion opportunities, have a chilling effect and disturbing effect on an individual. Uh, second one were investigations that should have been conducted and were not. These are serious things that were reported in the whistleblower protection and virtually nothing came of it. I would occasion deal with whistleblowers so I knew what was going on in that respect. And the third one were investigations that were not done correctly. They're deficiently and things like this. Now I've heard you give yourself some sort of title. Every agency of the government has an official office of Inspector General. These are people who have badges and guns and are authorized to conduct investigations. Uh, and investigations uh, are done by Department of Justice personnel uh, are usually turned over to them is of a serious magnitude. In order to do an investigation, you have to have access to documents, and you have to have written depositions. You have to interrogate people. You have to do that. Now, I'm sorry, folks. You guys on the internet, you're not doing any investigation. You're not even doing good research. I'm a librarian. It's not an investigation. You've got to call people in and cross-examine them. And, and you've got to have access to, to, you have to have a discovery process. What do you do, Google? Google miss ugly? What are, I don't even know what terms you use when you Google. <laughs> and you think, you know, I mean, what do you do? <laughs> what terminology do you use if you're a Google search engine? And do you think anyone who conducted any sort of crime is going to leave evidence on the internet or post it on the internet? I uh, or not? I don't understand this. They have to be the absolute worst criminals. I'm sorry, that's complete incompetence, and I don't know what you're doing. But that's not what I consider an investigation. I don't know what you call it. Keep it up, and I guess you think you're discovering something. Another one I heard is, what do you got to say? What? You want Ellen to be, just get a gun and have a badge. I thought you don't like guns, but if she gets a gun, she's an investigator now. You have to have some authority. What do you say? I, I don't know what you self, self, self well, you're why you're Trump and other people. <laughs> no, no, those people, they have specific <laughs> individuals that are responsible. They, fit, they follow guidelines, and that's their, their, that's their, they have, that's well defined, and they're confined within certain parameters of what they do. And get I see. Well, I worked very closely with them, uh, their offices over the years, mm -hmm. and they're entirely professionals. And what you're talking about is some sort of uh, thing. Yeah, they have dangerous jobs. You darn right, they have jobs, and I'm glad that people do it. Uh, no one uh, uh, regarding 9/11. I'm given that there were probably a year of preparation of this. An untold number of individuals, this was an operation of some magnitude, and to date no one apparently has been charged. No one has come forward to testify that they were a participant. There's been no tell-all book. There's been no one charged. So I don't know what it is you've gotten after all these years of investigation. 28 pages. Uh, <laughs> that's it. The other thing is I heard a war on drugs here. The war on drugs is rather interesting. Is is it was in fact under Nixon, but uh, what it was the unique feature of the war on drugs was that employers were supposed to make employees could do drug testing. In essence, they were deputizing all the bosses in the world. 
to be to do uh, drug testing. Um, but uh, uh, investigations, I've got a thing here regarding critical thought. Uh, they're serious businesses. Um, they're not easily done. Uh, you need oversight on these situations. There's, uh, um, but I don't know, you know, pursuing these things, John Lacare type novels, type information, I don't know, it's, it's intriguing, but anyhow, thank you very much, come again. Thank you, Charlie. All right, now you get the last word. You get the last word. Helen will come up and give us the last word. I, I give you a 20 oh, second comment. Some of the best investigations in the world have been done by people like Aaron Brockovich, <laughs> Lois Gibbs from Old <laughs> Canal. Citizen uh, investigators who don't done. have a badge. You're done. Citizen investigators who don't done. have a badge. You're done, Andrew. That's where, that's where knowledge comes from in the first place. Right in order. It's true. Yeah. All right, let's, let's get Actually, the charity. Ellen gets the. Yeah. Ellen gets the last word. Yeah, I wanted, yeah. quiet. Um, actually, I had asked Andy to do this with me because, um, so he's not out of order. I wanted yeah, him to. Yeah, he got back up to the board. No, I asked him to, 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 to do the presentation with me. Um, and because um, really, it, Andy, uh, I what he said is very true. The, Citizen investigator, citizen journalist, um, like Aaron Brockovich. Uh, actually, I read a book on Innocence Project, a great time life book. And, and at the back, there's all these movies based on real stories. Uh, trying to figure out how to, I want to figure out how to get these guys out because, you know, the problem is kind of this corrupt legal system. Um, and the prosecutor, the investigator, the police, and we're, we're kind of too intimidated to, but, you know, go in there, can I see the evidence? But, you know, in some cases, they find the family member or somebody will find the person who did it. And that actually, of all the Birch cases, it seems, I was writing about that, that, uh, that, you know, it's like by chance that somebody gets out that this guy, like the Central Park Five, if you saw that, they just happened to meet and he decided to confess that I really did it. And, um, and then, even then, the prosecutors that beat up these five little boys and made him confess to it, they don't even lose their jobs. They, and none of them have ever been prosecuted. You know, they, uh, some of them got kicked off just by, so we try to build up the public outrage so that they will not get to keep these jobs and you might have good leadership. You know, um, but, you know, and Charlie's argument is really, um, is really kind of the sad uh, state of things that, that I'm Thank really trying so to challenge um, by, because if you have, a, you know, you gave a guy, he has experience, he's got a gun, he's got a title, he you ends up being like William Barr, who I don't think I went into it, he, um, really the ones that Trump has picked, I mean the day we thought we were going to get a consent decree that was going to require police to be accountable, and um, when, but then as soon as Trump was elected, and we knew Jeff Sessions would be there, they, people said, oh, they, they've already made a deal. There's not going to be any consent decree. So what we have is this thing that Rahm Emanuel came up with, and um, I, I had found the research. My investigation that I do on the internet is I find documents, like George Seldes, the original investigative journalist, you find government papers and you find FOIA requests, you know, that, and people, there's citizen investigators posting things all over there that, that needs to be brought to attention. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so, <laughs> and, um, right, so, uh, you know, as Andy says, um, yeah, uh, what you want is, um, here, come say it with me, because we did talk about doing this official investigation. What she's trying to say is official and official investigators many times with the guns and the badges, they don't get involved. They ignore evidence until there's an overwhelming evidence 
amount dug up by citizen investigators. How many investigators have you dealt with over the years? Yeah, well, that's a good As point. Actually, I dated a, a Andy, detective for years. Badges? Okay? Badges? We don't need those no sticking badges. No, seriously, I dated a, an investigator, and I actually am an investigator, okay? I decided what career to get into as a market research analyst based on a test that said I like to read hundreds of books. And so if you look at my apartment, I have about 300 books strewn all over. I have as many as Andy, all on the same subject. I'm checking my facts. I'm going to the index. I'm reading what they wrote because they're referring to each other. This is how knowledge is built, right? It's built on science, right? You you say something and then he goes, wow, there's a fact. And we have to wonder, like you said, Charlie, why was there no investigation? They were suppressed. That's yeah, what we're trying to say. Confirmation you know? bias. Government doesn't Actually, investigate itself. The, the government won't investigate itself. That's the problem. That is why oh, we're, we're asking for a citizen police accountability council. We need independent citizen review boards because a, if a corrupt group will not investigate itself. An, a potentially an honest group will. That's my point is that, you know, if you look at a Nazi is not going to investigate a Nazi organization, would it? No, right? You come in and you go, I think you're Nazis. They're not going to investigate. They're going to open an independent investigation, you think? Um, no. They, by the definition, they have a code of silence that they have to adhere to. Even Charlie defends it. Are you making this up? You don't, you don't think there's a code of silence? No, there isn't. Uh, yeah, and Charlie said, if you are ordered, he asked Andy, if you're ordered by your supervisor in the army to tell to be quiet, you have to remain quiet, right? And if you tell, then you get sent like like Snowden did. You'd be sent to Russia, or or look at what happened to Julian Assange. He's in in isolated, you know, torture. And then I mean, these guys are, you know, we're trying to stop that. We're trying to change it. Um, okay. All right, Andy, right, right, gavel us out. Thanks to our speaker, and uh, give her a hand again. Yeah. All right, Helen, thank you. We're adjourned for a night. I like your hand.